The Raleigh Cigarette Program from Hollywood, starring Red Skelton, with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and Wonderful Smith. That's our three-piece orchestra. A piano, a stool, and a guy sitting there. Nelson and his orchestra playing, every little movement has a meaning all its own. And now we bring you Metro Golden Mayor's newest young comedian, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight, Truman? Say, you did a great job on that commercial. Oh, thank you, Red. Yeah, I never saw a more sincere Adam's apple in my life. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Red. Say, Red, I've been looking for you all day. Where have you been? I'm just getting home from the Easter parade. Oh, by the way, you know, we do this on Tuesday night. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> just getting home from the Easter parade, Red? Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, I walked by the pool room in, in my new suit, and that's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Red, I saw that new suit of yours. Uh, tell me, aren't those pants a little tight? Tight? Every time I stroll down uh, Hollywood Boulevard, they'd sing... I don't want to walk without you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you in the Easter Parade, uh, Truman. Yeah. Boy, you really look good. Oh, I did, Yeah, huh? boy, what an outfit. I've seen broken arms dress better. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a retreaded retread. <laughs> uh, Red, what was the matter with my outfit? Plenty. You're not supposed to wear a derby hat with a sun suit. Oh, you're not? No, I always wear a beret and a bodyguard. <laughs> Say, did you see Lard, uh, Laird Krieger? Lard. <laughs> did you see Laird Krieger in the parade? He was wearing a smart-looking tailor shop. <laughs> well, uh, gosh, with all this rationing going on, how can Lar Laird Krieger... <laughs> <laughs> How can he get enough material for a suit? Well, they haven't started to ration tarpaulins yet. <laughs> Say, did you notice the will? <laughs> <laughs> <Did> you... <laughs> Say, did you notice? That's not the word, but it'll have to do. <laughs> Put it up front. <laughs> Say, uh, did you notice the women's hats this year? I saw one lady wearing a hat that looked like a hat wearing a hat. <laughs> well, anyway, Red, the new spring fashions are screwy, aren't they? The women's, I mean. Yeah, you know, there, I know one lady here in Hollywood who's crying her eyes out because her husband bought her a mink coat. She cried because her husband bought her a mink coat? Yeah. Why? Because he wouldn't buy her a pair of slacks to go with it. <laughs> I had a pair of slacks once. <laughs> you did, Ozzy? What color? Well, they were a combination of green, yellow, purple, and chartreuse. Oh, really? Yes, it was terrible the first time I wore them. Well, what happened? I wound up in a fruit salad in a cut-rate <laughs> drugstore. <laughs> Poor old Ozzy, still on standard time. Hi, you bet. Hello, Harriet. Say, did you have a nice Easter? Oh, yes. I colored a lot of Easter eggs. Say, you know, I had a lot of fun Easter, too. I put a chocolate Easter egg in my Paul Parrot's cage. You did? What happened? Well, when he woke up, he looked at the egg and yelled, It's a lie! <laughs> Say, Red, did the Easter Bunny come to your house? Yeah, we like to think it was the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Why? Because he took the piano away. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing. That finance company certainly has hounded you about that piano, haven't they? Yeah, every time I'd go to bed, they'd send a guy around to play the blues in the night. <laughs> I heard you talking about Easter fashions before, didn't I? Yeah, Ed? you know, uh, all the women things are cute this year, but uh, don't you think the heels on their shoes are a little too high, Harriet? Too high? Yeah, I saw one woman uh, with high heels, one woman with high heels, <laughs> and every time she'd stop walking, a midget would run underneath and say, boy, what an air raid, children. <laughs> admit some of the styles are a little extreme. Extreme? <laughs> Did you, you see the girl that Bradley was with? Oh, well, Bradley. <laughs> now, wait a minute. She was... <laughs> she was a very nice girl, Red. What was wrong with her? Her eyelashes were too long. 
too long. Yeah, nobody else was scooping up and things in front of them like trolley cars. <laughs> well, Red, I, I thought you knew beauty. She used to be a model, you know. Yeah? I knew a model once. <laughs> was she a clothes horse, Ozzy? Well, I don't know about that clothes stuff. <laughs> I mean, could she wear clothes? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, she said. Her whole family were good dressers. Yeah? When they took her father away, he insisted on a double-breasted straight jacket. <laughs> straight jacket. Hey, Red. <laughs> Red, you know, I Somebody's like... Somebody's drinking canned heat tonight. <laughs> Say, I, I like that hat your girl is wearing in the Easter parade. Oh, thanks, Harry. You know, I buy all of her hats. You do? Yeah. Well, isn't that hard to do, buy a woman's hat? No, I figure if it looks good on me, it'll look good on anybody. <laughs> but I was sorry I bought her that pancake hat. Why, Red? Well, every time I kissed her, the syrup kept running Was it too waggy? No, I kind of like the way you pull that lever and those clay pigeons that shoot out. <laughs> Say, Red, don't you like those new veils the girls are wearing? No, I can't whether... <laughs> no, I can't tell whether they're pretty girls or the kind that go for me. <laughs> Say, did you ever kiss a girl that was wearing a veil? That I did, that I did. <laughs> How was it? Well, now I know what a... <laughs> now I know what a salmon feels like. I felt like a salmon once. What, Ozzy? I felt like a salmon once. <laughs> when was that, Ozzy? It was on my first job. I was stewed and canned the first day. <laughs> Ozzy, does your mother know you're out? <laughs> yes, and that reminds me, I'd better hurry back with her beer. <laughs> Say, did you get one of those victory suits for Easter, Red? Yeah, boy, and it's really some suit, too. No cuffs, no lapels, no pockets, and no lining. <laughs> but next year, they're going to be different. That's good. No, it isn't. Next year, just 12 buttons, no suit. <laughs> Should I kiss her, or should I shouldn't? Oh, mommy, she's such a pippin'. If I do, I get a whippin'. I do it. <laughs> should I squeeze her, or what I oughtn't? Oh, mommy, her spell is grippin'. If I do, I get a whippin'. I do it. <laughs> now I should remember what my mommy said. Son, you gotta mind me. But when there's a cutie button round my head, she's never around to remind me. Should I kiss her or should I oughtn't? Oh, mommy, I think I'm slipping. If I do, I get a whipping. I do that. <laughs> That was Red Skelton singing I Doot It, and very good too, Red. <laughs> oh, well, you're just saying that, Harriet. <laughs> I know it, but I gotta hold my job done. <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, well, Wonderful Smith. Uh, uh, say, where have you been, Wonderful? Down to the hospital. My sister done had a new baby. No kidding. What is it, a boy or a girl? <laughs> we don't know yet. They haven't put any clothes on it. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he's cute. Sure is. But then all babies is cute. Yeah, they sure are. But they have a tough time at first, too. Everybody making a fuss over them. Say, what do you say? Well, right after everybody lights up a Raleigh, let's show different things that have happened to little babies. And first, we go out west. And we find Deadeye riding up to his hideout, 
to, dis to discover that a baby has been left on his doorstep. Whoa! Well, we made it, Mr. Deadeye. Yeah, now hold still while I get off your back. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Deadeye. You know, that was quite a haul we made when we held up that bank. Yeah, we got four razor blades, two pounds of tin foil, and 11 toothpaste tubes. Didn't they have no typewriters? No, they got them buried in Fort Knox. <laughs> oh, look here. Here comes Miss Calamity Jane. Well, hello, Calamity. Hello, Dead Eye. What happened? You look a little stringy. Stringy? <laughs> Calamity, you're looking at my banjo. <laughs> oh, I thought that skin looked too clean. Yeah. Get out of my way, Dead Eye. I got to get to town to the baby supply store. Baby supply store? That's right. You mean one of them change stores? <laughs> yeah, somebody left a baby in your mailbox. A baby in my mailbox? Yeah. Doing that free delivery service anyway. <laughs> no, no, somebody abandoned the baby. No kidding. Now you take care of the kid till I get back. Can you do that? I could, Miss Calamity. We had 19 children in our family. 19 children in one family? Yeah, the stock was crazy. He thought he was a dive bomber. <laughs> Nineteen children. That sure sounds like that stork visit your house quite often. Yes, sir, but he finally got tired of coming round. Yes. So he sent the last four of us over by carrier pigeon. <laughs> See, uh, Calamity, where is this baby you're talking about? He's in the house. And listen, if he sneezes, don't use your sleeve on him. No, what'll I use? Use his sleeve. <laughs> Well, I gotta go now. Take care of the baby, Deadeye. Okay. Come on, wonderful. Well, here's the baby. Gee, ain't he wrinkled looking? Yeah, that ain't no baby. That's an eight-pound prune. <laughs> get you goo, get you goo, get... Oh! Did he bite your finger, Mr. Deadeye? Yeah, well, if at two cents, I'd give him the old one, two, three. <laughs> sure, he sure is cute. Look. Yeah. He's got his big toe in his mouth. Well, what's so great about that? I can do the same thing, too. Watch me. Well, what do you know? I bit my kneecap clean off. <laughs> Here, you take it, Mr. Deadeye. Okay, chubby little rascal. Thank you, sir. Not you, the baby. <laughs> you know, he kind of looks like me a little, don't he? I don't know. Let's look at his head and find out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stick him back in his crib, huh? Crib? What's that? Well, that's the kid's bed. Didn't you have no crib when you was a kid? No, sir. They just wobbled me around in a watermelon rind. <laughs> you don't know nothing, do you? How long you been out of them squaddling clothes? I don't know. One day I just stood up for good and down they came. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you like that? He's singing. I wonder if he knows Frankie and Johnny, huh? Uh-oh. Something tells me it's time for that infernal triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Deadeye, it's time to change. That's what Calamity said, too. What do you mean, change? Come change over. Change what? Come over here. I'll whisper to you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, let's see. Say, don't these things have no zippers? Man, these days, nothing has zippers. Who said so? The OPM. Well, then let them change the baby. <laughs> I don't know what to do myself. Hey, maybe he wants something, huh? Yeah, maybe he wants a nice cigar. Here, baby, want this cigar? Now, don't put that smelly old cigar in that baby's mouth. No? No, put it on this holder first. <laughs> Well, I guess we'd better make that change, huh? <clears throat> Hand me that three-cornered hat over there. But, Mr. Deadeye, this ain't no hat. Never mind what it is. Just hand it to me. <laughs> or I'll give you the old one, two, three. <laughs> Say, uh, let's give him a bath. I'll uh, get a tub and okay, water. Okay, that'll be fun. Come on, bring it over here. There we are, kid. Now, up the daisy. Man, man, just look at him splash around. Yeah, he sure is splashing, ain't he? I guess I better get out of the tub, huh? <laughs> See, you think we should put some olive oil on the kid? Yes, sir. Here's the bottle. Let's rub him down. Okay. There. 
That's that. Now let's put the olives back in the bottle. <laughs> Come on, let's get busy, wonderful, and get that gadget on him, huh? Not me. Oh, come on. Go get that thing off the line and put it on the kid. Oh, don't get so, Mr. Dead. I got my Sunday clothes on, and besides, I don't know how to put that kind on the baby. No. It ain't the three-cornered style. It ain't, huh? You mean I gotta do it myself? Yes. Square, huh? Well, give me that tablecloth. <clears throat> now, let me see now. Gee, this show is tough. I never did this for a baby before. Gee, yeah, I wish Wally Berry was here. He'd know what to do. <laughs> See, now, where's this go? I'll try it like this. I'll fold it way up here. Fold that one over there. Now, oh, well, it's a warm day anyway. <laughs> well, you ain't going to give up, is you, Mr. Deadeye? How about a baby's victory outfit? A baby's victory outfit? What's yeah, that? Kleenex and some bubble gum. <laughs> I'll do it right this time. Now, let's see. Over here, pin, mm, stuck myself with a thumb. Well, I ought to get that old pin, the one, two, three. Now, uh, let's see. Now, how's that? Fine. But where's his legs? That's funny. They were there a minute ago. <laughs> oh, well, he ain't going to be doing much walking anyway. Oh. Now, what's he crying about? He's got to have his bottle. What? He's got to have his bottle. That young... <laughs> oh, you don't understand. The kid drinks milk. Oh, got the cow habit, huh? <laughs> well, I know how we'll keep that baby quiet. I'll sing to him. You ready, baby? Here I go. Oh, the moon shines bright all through the night. Mr. Dada, be careful where you slapping. Well, I give up. Uh oh, somebody's coming. Sting him up, Dada. Ain't you coming through the door first? <laughs> Stick him up, did I? Well, Sticky Finger Jake, the kidnapper. Yes, and that baby belongs to the sheriff, and I'm holding him for ransom. Can't ransom hold his own babies? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get funny. That baby's been stolen. You mean that kid's hot? Well, get him out of here. I don't want no hot babies. My mama done told me. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't. The kid's staying here. You're going. Now, get going across that desert. Now, don't... Get going, did I? Don't point that gun at me, you breakfast food cowboy. <laughs> now, don't move, did I? I got my 45 pointed right at you. That's a 45? Mm-hmm. Mm. Don't look a day over 39. <laughs> you can't talk to me like that, did I? I got you covered. No. Yeah, well, that's more than we did for the baby. <laughs> You know, I'd beat you to a pulp if we weren't friends. Well, I'm not your friend. Don't tell me who my friends are. Now, look, Jake, let's be fair and square about this, huh? I'll count three, and then we'll draw, huh? Oh, no. I've heard that you shoot before you get to three. Idle gossip. Just idle gossip. Are you ready? One, two, three. He shouldn't carry guns. He don't know how to handle them. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Take off his boots. Take off his boots? Why? Well, he died in them, but with this leather shortage, he ain't gonna be buried in them. <laughs> then we have a lady and her little boy. A new neighbor has moved. A new neighbor has moved in next door with a little baby, and Junior's already become acquainted. So, Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the mean little boy. Hmm? Junior, stop swinging on that door. Look, Mommy, I had a fly. Don't be silly. You're not a fly. Oh, no? Well, then get me out of this fly paper there. <laughs> I had a fly. I had a fly. Oh, yeah, well, just... I Just wait till I get my swatter, that's all. Uh, yeah, it's okay, Mommy. I'm Junior again. <laughs> hey, Mommy, what you make, huh? An upside-down cake. See, all you cakes come up, uh, out upside-down, don't you, Mommy? <laughs> so do my line. <laughs> I notice you eat them, though. Sure, but who likes to stand on their head all the time? <laughs> hey, Mommy, can I have another piece of hard candy? No, Junior, that candy is too hard. You'll break your teeth on it. I already did. I'm down to me widow gums and going strong. 
If I can't have any more hard candy, how about the more animal crackers? Well, I gave you a dozen animal crackers just before... What did you do with them? I sleep with his mouth open. Junior! <laughs> you didn't! Yes, I did. Boy, Pop sure knows some good words, don't you, Ma? Uh, oh, listen, Junior. What? Hear that new baby crying next door? Is that a baby crying? Well, sure. What'd you think? I thought it was a coyote. King died. <laughs> hey, that reminds me, Mummy. Where'd I come from? Did you find me in a cabbage? No, in an apple. You... <laughs> I wormed that out of you, didn't I, Ma? <laughs> oh, listen, the poor little thing. Yeah. Did you see that nice baby, Junior? Yes. He or she is a nice baby, all right. Hey, what is he, Mommy? A him or a her? I don't know. Shall I go over and ask him? No, Junior. Uh, mm. Junior, where'd you get that ball? Hmm? I said, where did you get that ball? Now, let's not get no demand. <laughs> How would you like a whipping, Junior? Since when is it up, you know, Mommy? <laughs> Junior, where did you get that ball? Well, you know that old baby next door? Yes. Well, he gave it to me when he wasn't looking. <laughs> Well, you take it right back. No, you let me keep that ball or I will tell. You'll tell what? I will tell everybody that you flirt with a waiter in the restaurant set so you can get three spoonful of sugar in your coffee. Junior! <laughs> yes, you do too. Every waiter in town calls you granulated. <laughs> not only that, I will tell everybody you keep Grandpa in the cuckoo clock. I do not. Besides, it was his idea. They're engaged. <laughs> Poor old Grandpa, he's not quite any, any right head, is he, Mom? Hmm? No, he isn't. Yesterday I caught him cutting paper dolls out of Esquire. He was cutting paper dolls out of Esquire? Yes. Yeah, we thought he was crazy, didn't we, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mommy, I don't feel so good lately. Mm, I know, it's spring. You need some sulfur molasses. Here, I'll pour you a spoonful. No, I don't want to take that away. I'll hit the spoon. Junior, come on. Any. Take your sulfur and molasses. I can't, Mommy. I had the conscientious objector. <laughs> Junior, why do you annoy me so much? Why don't you do something else? Why don't you read the paper? Can I burn the house down, too? <laughs> I do read the paper. In fact, I just read where the government will fine you $10,000 if you cuff your pants. Mommy? Yes? Will you get fined $10,000 if you cuff me, Pan? No, I'll probably get a prize. Now go away. Okay, Mommy, okay. Mommy? Yes? Hey, look, I got faces on me knees. Well, that's nothing. A lot of people have faces on their knees. I know, but mine look like Hoover Hoover. <laughs> now stop your prattling and take that ball back. Okay, I will bite a hole in it first. Junior, take that dirty ball out of your mouth. <laughs> Boy, I never do that again. <laughs> oh, go away. Go take that ball with you. Oh, take you back. take that back, Mommy. Here, catch it. Don't throw it! See? You broke the window. See? It's the one we don't look out much anyhow. <laughs> but what about the flies and mosquitoes? They'll all come in. You're okay, but I bet after they get a load of me, they go right back out again. <laughs> Oh, just let me get my hands on you. Oh, oh you broke my window. No, you broke my window. No. <laughs> you hit me a boo I didn't hit you. I missed. You Want to try again for two bucks, ma? <laughs> now, you march yourself over there and take the baby a little present or something. Hey, that's a good idea. I would take him a mud pie. Now, what would a little baby do with a mud pie? Same as I do, just slop up everything with it. <laughs> now, look, Junior, I'm not going to tell you again. Take that ball back. Don't you hit me. I will tell you back. Ah, <laughs> oh, there, that little baby now. Hey, little baby, are you glad you see me? He <laughs> don't know me very well, does he, boy? <laughs> boy, you sure is a cute little baby. Boy, you got little bull wig. Oh, how I wish I was his age and know what I know now. <laughs> Where'd you get that big bottle of milk? You were too widow to drink that all by yourself. How about give me a wig, huh? Here, here, let go of me here, let go of me here. Now let go. Now, let me have the bottle. Come on, take it out of your little mouth. Come on. Mm. Gee, he's strong. He ain't as strong as me, though. Give me that bottle. I 
could answer that, but it would only lead to bloodshed. <laughs> now, you won't tell why I drank that milk. Ah, great A, but it's been cut. <laughs> hey, you know, my mummy said you were a little bouncing baby boy. I think I would try it. Oh, come on, you ain't even trying. <laughs> hey, look at that. You got no hair on you, widow head. I will run in the house and get some hair tonight and rub it on. Now, you stay right here. Don't you go away. I'm sorry, old man. Me pop drink it all up last night. <laughs> Boy, that old baby sure looked nice and comfortable in that old baby carriage. I think I will crawl in there with him. Maybe some pretty girl will come along and kiss me, too. <laughs> come on now, move over, baby. Come on, move over. There. Well, here we are in the baby, buddy. Just you and me and the little carriage. And hey, maybe if I get the carriage to push, we could go for a ride down at Deep Hill. You look deep enough to go for a long ride. <laughs> if I do, get a whipping. <laughs> I do this. Here I go, baby, down the hill. <laughs> oh, gee, we're going to crash into that haystack. <laughs> well, don't yell at me. It's your carriage. I thought you were driving. <laughs> Back to the baby situation, we find my brother Clem, the boy from the country, on his way to see his girl Daisy June. Now they're going to the hospital to inspect a new addition in Clem's family. Well, here I am. <laughs> on my way to Daisy June's house, you made me love you. I didn't want to do it. The gin made me do it. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Gee, it's a beautiful day. The birds are singing and the bees are buzzing and the P-38 Lockheed interceptors are zooming. <laughs> well, there's Daisy June's house. I'll knock on the door. <clears throat> Soft wood, ain't it? <laughs> Well, Daisy June. <laughs> I just came by to say hello. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> well, goodbye. Clem, come back here. My sakes, you're all spruced up today, ain't you? You look so different. You will finally comb my hair up and my eyebrows down. <laughs> See the space between them now? See, Clem, I told you that you had a forehead. <laughs> you look nice, though. Yo, I even cleaned the mud off my boots. Looky. Oh, yes, they look nice. Too bad you didn't have time to do your feet, too. Yeah. <laughs> what you got on your hair, bar grease? No, something new. <laughs> Moose. <ooh. laughs> Oops. Mm hmm? I said, ooze, ooze? Yeah, it's mine. The ooze one little ooze. <laughs> you know, Daisy June, you look pretty nice today. Well, thank you, Clem. You like my hourglass figure? I sure do. Too bad there isn't more hour and less glass. <laughs> Say, what are those lumps on your face? Well, them's my cheeks. Well, wonderful world, wonderful world. <laughs> you know, I just can't get over 
over how nice and clean you look, Clem. You? What you been doing? Your laundry? No, I gotta go to the hospital. My brother's wife's gonna be a mother. Well, then why should you have to go? Well, my brother's working at Lockheed and he can't get off. <laughs> so he asked me if I'd go over and worry for him. <laughs> Well, now that's sure mighty brotherly of you, Clem. Yes, it is. But it sounds awful silly. No, it ain't. I'm always helping him while he's working so hard with the defense, you know. He broke his finger trying to get a nickel back from the phone, and he was too busy to think about it. And for weeks, I suffered for him. <laughs> it hurt so bad one night, he called me up. He said, somebody stepped on it, so I fainted for him. <laughs> Well, he better watch out working so hard at Lockheed. He'll kill himself. Well, if he does, he'll probably bury me. <laughs> you, you can't quit once you work there, you know. Well, so long as he's helping to win the war. You. Every time a new bomber rolls off that assembly line, everyone smiles and says, Long hours is what did it. Long hours is what did it. Wonderful world, wonderful world. <laughs> Yep. Your, your brother has a lot of children, ain't he? Yo, here's a picture of the youngest. Oh, he's such a nice baby. He has such fluffy blonde hair. It's not blonde hair. His father's a beer blower, and the kid didn't have sense enough to duck. <laughs> well, he's a cute baby anyway. Yo, I don't know. I think he's kind of dumb or so. Kind of dumb? Yo, every time I come into the room, he says, blob, 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 blob. Well, I think that's pretty smart. Well, gee whiz, my name ain't Blob, it's Clem. <laughs> they ought to see me, though. Every day I give the baby his bottle and I take a bath. Tomorrow I'll give him another bottle and I'll take another bath. Well, gosh, Clem, don't the baby ever get a bath? Not unless he beats me to the soap. <laughs> well, what else you been doing lately? Oh, I've been down behind the barn smoking corn nylon. Corn nylon? You can't get silk anymore. <laughs> Go to the hospital, Clem. Give me a kiss. Oh, I ain't going to kiss you. Oh, Clem, you ain't romantic at all. I know. I'm just a gopher in the tunnel of love. <laughs> but I've had a lot on my mind lately, Daisy. You have? What you been thinking about, Clem? I've been trying to figure out a way to get that money away from Lum and Abner. <laughs> oh, Clem, how you changed? Always talking about business now. And you used to be so romantic, didn't you? Yep, when I lived in Griffith Park, I was the best nick of the woods. Well, if we're going to the hospital, we better get going. I'll put on my hat. There. That's, that's a hat? Well, yes, why? What does it look like? It looks like a chicken to me. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> oh, don't you be silly. <laughs> well, let's go. Gee, I hope I run into a nice young doctor. Maybe I can get some free advice on the water on my knee. You got water on the knee? Yep, seep down from the head. <laughs> well, here's your car. Why, Clem, I asked you to wipe the car off this morning and you didn't do it. Yes, I did, too. Well, you didn't. Look, I can write my name in the dust on the hood. You can? Education's a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> Well, if you'd clean my car, I was going to give you a big hug and a kiss and 35 cents. Now she tells me. <laughs> well, let's go, Daisy. Just think, Clem, a new little baby is about to be born. Yep. Where were you born, Clem? Gopher Hole. <laughs> gopher Hole? You mean Gopher Hole, Nebraska? No, just the Gopher Hole in the backyard. But since then, though, we've got a, a lovely one-room dump now. Well, how many is in your family? You mean including me? Yes. Well, let's see. There's Cousin Abner, Uncle Jake, and uh, Cousin Freddy, Aunt Flozy, Marnie, oh, oh, about 74. 74 in one room? Yeah. We got an awful high roof, you know. <laughs> well, here's the hospital. That short distance, we could have walked. <laughs> well, let's get out and go in, huh? Now, there's the doctor over there in that white suit. Well, hello, Doc. Say, while I'm here, would you like to look at my knee? I think I got water on it. You think so? Yep, listen while I shake my leg for you. <laughs> Feel how soft it is. Have an egg in that? 
Feel how soft it is, Doc. Oh, well, I, uh... Go ahead. Uh, it's all right. No, I better not. Well, you why see? not? You got your white suit on. You must be on duty. I am, but not here. Good humor! <laughs> Say, this must be the doctor now. I see him through the glass door there. Say, are you the doctor here? Uh, yes, I am. Well, where's the other doctor that used to be here? I liked him a lot better. He was a conscientious fella. Yeah, it's too conscientious. He's now up in Oregon with a pickaxe. Oh, yeah, we see. Say, has my brother's baby arrived yet? <clears throat> I gotta worry for him, you know. Yes, it's here. I'll get him. Gee, oh, it's here? Oh, gee. Oh, dear. Have a smoke. I think I'm gonna faint. Oh, well, you haven't even seen it yet. Oh, my, oh, my, the and baby. stop screaming. I got to. My brother would like it that way, you know. <laughs> In your head against the wall. You put dents in it. In my head? No, in the wall. There oh, he is. Oh, dear. How's the mother? Is she okay? Yes, she's fine. Well, let me see it. You know, my brother's going to be disappointed. He was sort of expecting a baby. <laughs> well, he is a baby. A brand new one. New? Well, he looks like a hundred years old, bald-headed, no teeth. <laughs> and uh, he has the strangest cry. Listen, I'll show you. Them long hours at Lucky to do it. Remember, we'll all be back again next week at the same time. Red Skelton, Oz and Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and your announcer, Truman Bradley. Until next week, then. This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening. Red Skelton is heard on this program by arrangement with Met Golden Air Studios. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm -hmm.